Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I wanted to talk to you today about uh, mental neurological associations with gluten. I'm often asked how what you eat could affect your, your mental state or your psychological state, and it's actually very well understood. There's tremendous volumes of research showing that gluten affects the nervous system, sometimes more often than even the digestive tract. So um, the studies that I wanted to discuss with you are, are, are two very different studies, um, but, but the link I think you'll find very interesting. So the first one was done back in 2000. It was in the journal Brain, and what they were looking at were children with autism and finding the association that depending on the type of behavioral abnormalities that children had, different parts of their brain, uh, the parts of the brain that affected that type of behavior, actually had decreased circulation to it. That's called hyper, hypo perfusion. So perfusion, if something's perfused, it's sort of the blood is going well into the area, hypo meaning insufficient. So hypo perfusion basically means a lack of good circulation. And in this case, they were talking about the brain. So um, what they found out was that, as I said, certain behaviors in certain children, sure enough, found that part of the brain was affected. So, the, so why, they had no idea back in 2000, um, but they certainly found the correlation. Then fast forward to 2004, where a study was done in the American Journal of Medicine, and what they were looking at was hypoperfusion again, but associated with celiacs. So what they found was that 73% of the celiacs they looked at actually had areas of their brain that were hypoperfused, not enough circulation. And what was exciting about the study is that these were only celiacs that were undiagnosed, meaning not following a gluten-free diet. And then they had two other groups they looked at. One was a control group that um, didn't have you know, anything wrong with them, so they were, they were found to be perfectly fine. And then the other group, the other sort of control group, was a group of celiacs who were following a gluten-free diet. So they were uh, known diagnosed celiacs and following a gluten-free diet, and they did not have that same issue with the hypoperfusion, showing it could heal, it could actually improve once gluten was removed. But if you put these two studies together, it brings an interesting uh, point across, which is that if autistic children have hypoperfusion and celiacs have hypoperfusion, that maybe uh, gluten is one of the instrumental factors affecting the brains in autistic children as well. Because there are a number of studies showing that children who are autistic, and usually they're put on a gluten-free and casein-free diet, which I completely agree with because I'm not a fan of dairy, but we can talk about that some other time, um, and I have spoken about it already. But the point is they're put on a gluten-free and casein-free diet, and uh, changes are, are definitely noted, uh, and then when they go back to those foods, negatives are, are, are then uh, occurring as well. So there, there's a number of studies that show that. And there's a great deal of arguments going on about whether that's the real cause. And I don't think it's a cause. Um, well, I don't think it's the only cause, I, I should say. I think it is a cause or it's a contributing factor to these children. Um, and now you know as to why that, that might be occurring. So pretty interesting. And um, of, co of course, autism is just one neurological problem that can be associated with gluten. There are many, many more, but I specifically wanted to give you some more information on autism because it's really on the rise and has such a huge effect on society, the children affected, the family affected, and if autism has not touched your life, it probably has touched someone's life that you know. So please share this information with them. It's certainly not uh, difficult or, or life-threatening to go on a gluten-free, casein-free diet, and it may make all the difference. So I hope you found this informative. Please uh, write to me, send me your questions and comments. I do love to hear from you. And until next time, I wish you very good health.